Welcome to Lesson 3b, Converging Nozzle Mass Flow Rate. In this lesson, we'll develop an equation for the steady mass flow rate of an ideal gas flowing through a 1D adiabatic isentropic converging nozzle. We'll also discuss what happens to the mass flow rate when the flow is choked, and then what happens to it when the back pressure is lower than what is required to choke the flow. We'll start with this familiar sketch where we have stagnation conditions in a large tank, a converging nozzle, and some back pressure out here. All of these are considered to be constant, and AE is the exit area. Let's consider the mass flow rate through this nozzle. First we recognize that M dot is constant at any cross section of the duct. Assuming of course no leaks, M dot here has to be the same as M dot here and m dot at the exit plane. So let's take some location where the area is just A, and we'll consider the general case where the flow may or may not be choked. This statement we know from conservation of mass, and from which we also know that for a 1D type approximation like here, m dot is rho VA, where V is the average speed. Well, let's work on each of these variables we'll use the ideal gas law for rho. For V, we know that Mach number is V over A, speed of sound, so V equal capital M times A, and A itself is the square root of gamma RT, since this is an ideal gas. So here we'll write M, square root of gamma RT, and then the area, of course, is just the area. A little bit of algebra yields M dot equal PAM, square root of gamma over RT. But we're also approximating the flow as isentropic. Therefore, we can use the isentropic relationships for P and T. And again, we'll make use of ratios. We'll write P as P over P naught, since we have an expression for P over P naught, times P naught, which is known in the upstream tank. Then our AM, I'll put square root of gamma over R, and now we'll let T be T over T naught, which we know again from isentropic relations, times T naught, which is known in the tank. So this gives us T over T naught, T naught, all raised to the negative one half, since T appears in the denominator and under the square root. As I said previously, this trick of using ratios is very useful, because now we can apply our isentropic relations for P and T. Thus, m dot equal 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2, m squared, negative gamma over gamma minus 1, watching our negative sign on the exponent, since normally we write this as p naught over p with a positive exponent, times p naught, a m, square root of gamma over r, and then the quantity t over t naught, which is 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2, m squared to the negative 1, times our t naught from here, all raised to the minus one-half power. Now a little bit of algebra, realizing that this term and this term are the same, so we can combine these exponents, and remembering to include this one when we do this portion. So we get m dot equal p naught a m square root of gamma over r t naught, where I put this t naught here, and then this term in parentheses, and combining the exponents, and I'll shift this down a little bit to give me room for my exponent, which is negative gamma over gamma minus 1 from here, plus 1 half, which is the product of these two. Finally, a little bit of algebra on this gives us negative gamma plus 1 over 2 gamma minus 1. Thus, finally, we can write m dot equal p naught a m square root of gamma over r t naught, 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2, m squared to the negative gamma plus 1 over 2 gamma minus 1. This is our expression for m dot for the general case, in other words, choked or unchoked, and I called this equation 4 in my notes. Some comments. This equation applies at any cross-section of the duct, since it's simply an expression of conservation of mass. And as I've already said, this equation applies whether the flow is choked or not. In other words, for any value of back pressure, of course back pressure 
has to be less than p naught or there won't be any flow. And I should say up here that m dot is constant through the duct. Well, since this applies anywhere in the flow, this equation also applies at the exit plane, where A equal AE, the exit plane area, and Mach number is ME. Now consider the choked case. If back pressure PB is low enough, the flow is choked, and therefore AE equal A star at the exit plane, and ME equal 1 at the exit plane. In other words, the flow is sonic at the exit plane, as we've discussed previously, when the flow is choked. Therefore, the choked mass flow rate will also be the maximum mass flow rate, as we've discussed previously, since once it's choked, the flow doesn't change in the duct anymore. And from our equation 4, therefore, m dot max equal m dot choked equal p naught, and then a is a star, and m equal 1, square root of gamma over r t naught, and we plug in m equal 1 into the term in parentheses and do a little algebra and we get gamma plus 1 over 2 raised again to the negative gamma plus 1 over 2 gamma minus 1. This is the equation for choked mass flow rate and I'll call that equation 5. And note that we applied equation 4 at the exit plane but this mass flow rate is constant throughout the entire duct. And we know that we get choked flow when PB is less than P star. And as a quick review of the previous lessons, as PB is lowered below P star, the flow is choked and thus mass flow rate no longer changes. It's now fixed at this maximum or M dot choked. Now let's plot M dot versus the ratio PB over P naught. I'll plot M dot on the vertical axis and PB over P naught on the horizontal axis going from 0 to 1. We'll look at five cases. Case A is when PB is equal to P naught, and I'll make a list of these up here. This means there's no flow. Thus, M dot is 0. Case B is the case of subsonic flow, where PB is greater than P star, but PB is less than P naught somewhere here, and there will be a non-zero mass flow rate. We'll let C be the sonic, just choked condition, where PB equals P star. Well, P star will be somewhere here. P star over P naught, recall, is about 0.5283 for air. And this point will be up here. I'll move these up to make room for the other two. Namely, D is the choked case with PB less than P star, somewhere here. But once the flow is choked, m dot no longer changes, so point D will be here and will have the same mass flow rate as C. Finally, E is a total vacuum with PB equals zero. That would be here, and again the mass flow rate does not change anymore. The curve of mass flow rate connecting these points will look like that, mass flow rate increasing as PB decreases until we reach sonic conditions and from there on mass flow rate remains constant. This is what we call m dot max or m dot choked. Let's also look at these same conditions in terms of PE over P naught. Again as a function of PB over P naught. In this case PE over P naught goes from 0 to 1 because the exit pressure can't be greater than P naught if we have flow from left to right. Case A is where there's no flow Case B was subsonic flow, and case C was sonic flow. And it turns out that connecting these points, we get a straight line. What happens when PB is even smaller? Well, the exit pressure, like everything else in the duct, no longer changes. So point D is there, and point E is here when we have a perfect vacuum. Thus, we have a straight horizontal line. And I need to move my X onto that horizontal line and keep my color convention. So this is what the pressure diagram will look like. For air, P star over P naught is 0.5283 at point C. Sir, once the flow is choked then, is there any way to change the mass flow rate? Well, Joel, let's discuss this. I'll pose your question, how to increase M dot? The answer is that once PB is less than P star, the only way to change m dot is by changing the upstream stagnation properties. 
P naught, T naught, etc., or by changing exit area AE, of course, making the exit plane larger or smaller. From our equation 5 for m dot max, just looking at the equation, we can see that m dot goes up if p naught goes up since p naught is in the numerator. In other words, higher tank pressure. That makes sense. m dot goes up if exit area goes up, like I illustrated with the bicycle tire previously. If you have a bigger hole, in other words, a bigger exit area, you should get more flow rate, which also makes sense. But m dot goes up if t naught goes down. In other words, a lower or smaller tank temperature. That one's not so obvious. But that's the case since t naught is in the denominator of equation 5. How do we explain this one? Well, as t naught goes down, rho naught goes up if all else is the same. And if there's a bigger density, m dot would go up. But as t naught goes down, t itself goes down by our ratios, and therefore speed of sound goes down, since a is the square root of gamma rt. So we can think about this at a smaller speed of sound. It is easier to reach sonic conditions, in other words, at a lower speed, when the speed of sound is smaller. All this to say that we have a smaller v, which makes mass flow rate go down. These are competing effects. The increase in density causes m dot to go up, but the decrease in temperature, speed of sound, and therefore v, causes m dot to go down. Well, this one wins. m dot does go up when t naught goes down. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos. One, two, three. That's all there is to it.